That's Daniel. He says hi. Apparently, Tanner is going to be working for the UFC at some point soon, so that's good. Welcome. So, this is for Zach, but also if other people miss, um, we can... So this is really the last thing that we're going to do with circuits. Um, we're going to have a test on this fairly soon and then move we'll on to a different topic. Um, but this deals with adding, figuring out how to determine total capacitance in circuits. We have more than one capacitor. And the capacitors can be wired in series and parallel or combination. So in that way, it's very much like resistors and how we have to think about them. This is the overall formula for capacitance. And this is kind of what defines it. In other words, it's this constant, which is true of all electrical, um, I mean, it is a constant for a lot of electrical formulas. It's 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. This is the area in square meters of the capacitor. And this is the distance between the two plates of the capacitor in meters. If we have a dielectric, we know we can store more charge, and that's what that dielectric constant is. So these things, basically the area and the distance between the plates define the capacitance of a capacitor. This uses capacitance to describe the ratio of charge held per volt. We think of this as electric pressure or push. For a given amount of push, if we have a higher capacitance, we can hold more charge. So that particular amount of capacitance depends on these factors. But for a given value of capacitance, we can hold a certain amount of charge for every one volt, or for two volts, or for three volts, or things like that. So that's really a ratio. The rules for circuits that we've learned before still apply in series and parallel circuits. But we're going to develop some new rules for capacitors in series and parallel circuits. So I've got a battery here, we're gonna call it a six volt battery, or power source. We've got a single capacitor here right now in a series circuit, because there's only one path. And I'm gonna say that it has a capacitance of C. It makes it pretty easy. If I had this and it was completely uncharged, let's say I had a switch up here, the switch was open, and there was no charge on the capacitor, the voltage across this power source would be six volts. There would actually be a difference in voltage across this as well, but if there's no charge on the capacitor, there is no potential difference across the capacitor, and therefore it would have no voltage across it. If I close the switch on an uncharged capacitor, initially, does this oppose current flowing a lot? or almost none. I will repeat it because I worded it weird. Um, when this is initially closed, when the switch is closed, does this capacitor, which is uncharged, oppose current flowing a lot, or basically none? Correct. Because this is a huge what for charges? Remember my analogy? Playground. There's so much room on the playground, and nobody is there. So it's easy to pile charges on top of this and to have negative charges going at the bottom. After a long, long time, the playground is Thank you. And so we can't pile any more charges across it. So once this is full, what will be the voltage across this capacitor? It would be. Initially it was zero, but now it's six. If we were to think about adding and subtracting voltages going around the circuit, if we started here, we would add six volts if we cross the battery in this direction. And then when we cross here, we'd have a difference. We'd lose six volts across the capacitor, and we'd end up back at zero. We went the other direction. Kind of weird to think of it this way, but 
producing that or why? Because I'm just going to borrow it again. Maybe I'll do it in a different form. We start here at zero. If we go from positive plate to negative, we technically would think of that as losing six volts. So now we're at negative six. And then we go across here and we would think we're kind of going backwards, we're gaining six. So once again, we're back at zero as we reach that spot. No matter how you look at it, we would have six volts across this capacitor because it's the only thing in that path. And in any circular path or loop, the voltage where you start has got to be the same as the voltage where you end. So you've got to gain and lose the same amount across an entire segment. So now let's say we're thinking about adding another capacitor here. Let's say it also has a capacitance of C. Justin, what would be the voltage across that second capacitor? Do you agree? This is in parallel. Parallel circuits have voltage the same in um, parallel branches. That would also be 6 volts. If I look at this independently, and I cover this middle branch for this branch up, this would have 6 volts across it. And if I have 6 volts, a certain capacitance, it will hold a certain amount of charge. This capacitor would hold the same amount of charge as this capacitor holds. Why? Because we've got the same capacitor value and they have the same voltage across it. We're going to add a third one. Once again, the voltage across this is 6 volts. The charge that it could hold would be Q. So it could hold more charge because I've got another capacitor now with 6 volts potential difference. So overall, what do you think happens to the total capacitance of this circuit as I add capacitors in parallel? about it, we can hold three times the charge as we did with just one capacitor. So in fact, really what it's like, because this is six volts, this is six volts, this is six volts, it's essentially like saying we've got a single capacitor with three times the surface area as the one we had originally. So in fact, it would basically triple. So that means the same thing is those three capacitors that are in parallel. So in a parallel circuit, we simply add the capacitance of each individual branch's capacitors to get the total. So that hopefully that makes sense. Now we're going to think about a series circuit. So I had this where I initially had a oh god, that's one capacitor. Oh we had a single capacitance. Again, it's got a capacitance of C now, because we've got only one capacitor. And the voltage across this you said was what? Six volts, that makes sense. Now let's say we've got another identical capacitor. And I'll say it's identical because it also has a capacitance of C. What do you think the voltage across this capacitor would be, Daniel? Do you agree? Do you agree? I would also agree. 
the voltage is now split because we've got two places we've got to lose that six volts. And if these are equal values of capacitance, there would be three volts on either one of those capacitors. So I've lost voltage there. So if my voltage goes down, the charge that I can hold on that given capacitor would have also had to go down in order to keep the capacitance of this individual capacitor the same. So we're going to be looking at what happens to the capacitance of the whole circuit. But if I zoom in just on this, this plate area didn't change. This distance between the plates didn't change. So the capacitance of just this capacitor didn't change. What that says is if the voltage goes down, the charge that I can hold on that capacitor goes down. Hopefully that makes sense, basically because there's less push, less voltage on that particular capacitor. Now, if we think about the charge that's held in the entire circuit, though, this is how we're going to help. It's going to help us think about the capacitance of the entire circuit. So let's say before this is hooked up, we know that we've got a situation that would be neutral if the capacitor is uncharged. Billions of positives and billions of negatives. Once we hook it up, we know we have excess positives in places and excess negatives in places. So let's say I've got an excess of four positives up here. What would be the charge on the bottom of that capacitor? Justin? That makes sense to me. I've got to have the same charge on each side of the plates. What would be the charge on the top of this plate? How many? Why two? Oh, sorry, this is, should be negative two. Does that make you change your answer? Yeah, it's going to be four. This is kind of like an island. It's still neutral overall, but if I we pulled four negatives up to this bottom part of this capacitor plate, then the extra four positives would be on this one. So something like that also. So in a series circuit with capacitors in series, the charge on all the plates actually has to be the same. You can't have more on one capacitor than on another. That would even be true we had something like this, where if we made this a bigger plate, a bigger capacitor, and let's say this capacitance is 2C, now the voltage may not be the same across them, we'll come to that in a minute, but I could only put four charges up here and down here. I can't ever have more on these plates than this plate. It might be hard to understand that for this region and for this region, but in the island where we can't have charges jump across the plates of a capacitor, hopefully it makes sense why if I've got plus four down here, I have to have negative four up here. So hopefully that So now let's say we've got this. Let's go back to the example I have in the room. We're starting off with a circuit with one capacitor with six volts. Same six volts. I'm going to draw these the same, but it's not really going to make much difference. So we're going to compare the charges on the capacitors in this circuit compared with the charge on the capacitors in that circuit. So it doesn't matter to me now how many we draw. This will just let me know how OCD Justin is. Justin? 
How many charges would you like on this top plate of a capacitor? No, you're not as OCD as I thought. So Justin, how many charges on the bottom? Makes sense. And the voltage across this capacitor is how much? So now we are doing a comparison between this circuit and this circuit. I've added a second capacitor in. I've charged it up. Each capacitor is fully charged. And you told me that the voltage across this would be now and how many charges on this capacitor plate? On this one? Can you explain why? So, now, so in the, in the one on the left, each capacitor is driven along with six volts. But now on the right, there's two of them, so we're kind of splitting even. Everything else stays the same. So as we add capacitors in series, this is going to be weird to say this, so listen carefully. As we add capacitors in series, does their capacity to hold charge increase or decrease? Decrease. Does any individual capacitor will hold less charge? than it would if it was all by itself in the circuit. If we had four capacitors here, it would be one positive on the top and one negative on the bottom. So they can't hold as many charges because they don't have as much voltage as they did before. If they don't have as many voltage, as much voltage, and the individual capacitor itself stays the same, again, it can't hold as much charge. So it's kind of a ratio thing. So if overall, in a series circuit, Capacitors hold less and less charge when we add more and more capacitors. The overall capacitance in a series circuit decreases when we add more capacitors. Each individual capacitor can hold less and less charge. So in fact, Capacitor in series, we have to do this. One over the first capacitor plus one over the second plus one over the third equals one over the total capacitance in series. So if this total capacitance is just C, this would be one over C plus one over C plus one over the total. I'm doing the reciprocal thing again. The total capacitance in this circuit would be one half C. That's half the total capacitance we have. We had three resistors in series, it would be a third of the total capacitors here. Hey Daniel, those rules look kind of familiar, don't they? What do they look like? They do. They're flip-flopped, yeah. So the thing about this is the first time I taught AP Physics with uh, an algebra-based book, it was a first edition of the book, sadly, they had everything correct in the chapter, but in the chapter summary at the end, they had flip-flopped those rules. They had them exactly backwards. That is really bad for students understanding. So this is correct, and these are things that are on your corner sheet. So the rules look flipped, but it's really because of what has to happen when you put these in series and in parallel. So I want to go through and do a couple examples now with these. You probably should write them down as we go through them. Um, if you, unless you feel really good about remembering things on your own, which is okay. Um, we'll go from there. Can I just ask one more yes. question? Did I screw up? No, I don't think so. Thank you. Um, I'll see. So the circuit on the left has four, a total of four positives and four negatives, but the circuit on the right also has a total of four positives and four negatives. But why Correct. Is why is that? So the total push that's given by the battery is going to be, again, the same. It's going to be the 6 volts. But how that pushes charges on the capacitors is going to be different. Um, it'll be less on any individual charge. So 
if we have something like this, in fact, the total value of these things, whether it's four or eight or one or two or things like that, would depend on the, the overall capacitance. So since I'm saying all three of those capacitors are equal, but here the voltage is half over them, we would get this charge split super evenly like this. Now, the total amount, if this value and these values were different, might be different. I might have like 14 or 14. But, so, if I didn't add this, if I added something like C and 2C here, I might not have a total of four positives and four negatives. I might have a different total number of charges. So I think the reason that those split the way they did is because I used capacitors that essentially all had the same initial value. And I'm going to try to go through an example here in a minute where you see how the charges um, will still have to split evenly even though the capacitor values might be different. So then, it's, so then both of them still store within the same total? In this example, they do. Okay, so not all of them. Correct. Correct. If this was a different value of capacitance, that would, they would not have the same total charges here as they have in here. Good call. Okay. Um, I'll leave these rules up here. So I'm going to have a 12 volt circuit. I have a bridge here with a 20. Microfarad capacitor. And capacitance values are normally really low, microfarads or picofarads or things like that. And then a uh, Thirty microfarad capacitor there. And I'm going to have an outer branch twenty five microfarad capacitor. So the first thing I want to do. Find total capacitance. What do you think would be the first thing to do that we could do to attack that? Find the two in the middle, and they're in series. Absolutely. This is just like solving with circuits except with capacitors, and the rules are flip flop. So I would agree with that. I'm going to attack this first. I'm going to say 1 over 20 plus 1 over 30 is 1 over, oh my god, this is not right. Capacitance in series. So the least common denominator is 60. We've got 2 sixtieths. Plus 360s. No, 360s plus 260s. Woo! So again, this is equal to 5 over 60. Cross multiply or do the reciprocal, or however you do that in your calculator. I'm going to get that capacitance in series would be 12 microfarads. So now, when I look at it, I could redraw this as. 12 volts plus 12 microfarads. Twenty five microfarads. So now how would I get the total? Just add them up. 12 plus 25. 
So when I screw up today, you're gonna have to help me because it is definitely not going well with what I'm writing and what my brain wants to say what's going on here. So that's the same as 3.7 times 10 to the negative fifth grams. And like a lot of times, you may want to have this in standard units in order to help figure things out later. The second part of this that I want to do. So I want to figure out what the voltage is across the 30 microfarad capacitor. So I'm going to erase this. If I have to redraw it, I'll, I'll redraw it. Tanner, if I was to ask you to guess what the voltage across this capacitor would be, would it be more than 12 volts or less than 12 volts? More than 12 volts. For sure. Because in that path, you can't, you can't use all of you know, more than 12 volts. All right, now, Tanner, if I was going to ask you the voltage across the 30 microfarad capacitor, do you think it would be more than 6 volts? Less than six volts, or exactly six volts? More than six volts. Okay. Daniel, what do you think? Sure. We've got 12 volt power source, but we've got those two capacitors which are in series with each other. So my question for you is, Across the 30 microfarad capacitor, do you think the voltage would be more than 6 volts, exactly 6 volts, or less than 6 volts? Exactly 6 volts. Okay. Justin, what do you think? What would be the voltage across the 30 microfarad capacitor? More than 6 volts, exactly 6 volts, or less than 6 This is tricky, but I think when we get to his hand, we're just shaking your head, you're just going to have to help me here, for sure. Um, when we go through this, I think it'll make sense, so with, with the actual answer. In this branch, the charge has to be the same on the top plate of this, the bottom plate of this, the top plate of this, and the bottom plate of this. It has to be that way. And across this branch, we know we've got 12 total volts, correct? So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to find the charge on any one of these capacitor plates. So first, find charge on plates in the middle branch. So that's when we have to go back and say, that's a 12 microfarad equivalent capacitor. So I'm going to say that C is equal to Q over delta V. I'm going to rearrange that and say that Q is equal to C times delta V. So for that branch, the capacitance is 12 microfarads. So that's 1.2 times 10 to the negative fifth Farads. Across that branch, the voltage is 12 volts. 12 times 12 is 144, so 12 times 1.2 is 14.4. So this actually ends up being um, a total of uh, 
1.44 times 10 to the negative 4 coulombs. If I want to find out the total charge held by this circuit, by the way, I could do the same thing. I could say Q equals C times V. So Q would equal the capacitance of the entire circuit, 3.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, times 12 volts. But I don't need to do that to answer this question. Obviously, there would be more charge held out on this branch than in this one, because I've got all 12 volts across just that one capacitor. So now what I've got to do is I've got to recognize that that charge is the amount of coulombs of charge on this top plate, and this bottom plate, and this top plate, and this bottom plate. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to rearrange this equation, but I'm going to zoom in on just this capacitor. So I'm going to say delta V across the 30 microfarad is equal to C times Q. Capacitance of just this is 30 microfarads. 3.0 times 10 to the negative 6. Oh, negative 5. Q, 1.44 times 10 to the negative 4 coulomb. I can hear Justin's disappointment. Because I think I'm going to do this again because I like to always double check my math. Oh, wait. That, oh, wait a second. Did I screw up? I think I might have screwed up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to screw this up. Single screw. I did screw it up. You didn't even tell me. How many of you have experienced death by algebra one? I also just experienced this. If I look at this, this is Q divided by C. You are free to tell Mr. Hewan that I, I had death by algebra one. I only figured it out. Once I realized my number was already screwed up. Let's try that again. Q, 1.44 times 10 to the negative fourth. C, 4.8 volts across this, which is less than half, which means nope and nope. I think if when I first started doing this, I would have agreed with you. It's like more capacitance, more voltage. That would be true if we were thinking about resistors, right, and things like that. The reason I think conceptually why this now makes sense to me is this. I look at this circuit, this part of the circuit here. How does the amount of charge on this plate compare to this plate compare to this plate compare to this plate? It's the same. Well, let's draw that. So if I think about that, and I'm going to exaggerate these. Let's say I have six charges on each plate. One, two, three, four, five, six. Where are those charges closer to each other? Top plate or bottom plate? 
top plate, where are they pushing harder against each other? Top plate or bottom plate? Top plate. That takes more voltage to do that. In other words, to keep the same amount of charges on a small capacitor, you've got to have more push or more electrical pressure from the battery acting here than you do here. Here there's more space, so you don't need to push as hard to keep the same number of charges on that push. Does that kind of make sense? That's the only way I did, did, like when I started thinking about this, it's like, oh, it makes sense. You don't have to push as hard. There's more room for them to spread out. And that goes back to that analogy of voltage is, is like electrical pressure. It's not a perfect analogy, but it's pretty good. So that's why this is less. The voltage across this would then be 7.2 volts. We could handle that mathematically by doing the same thing down here. Same charge. We're only divided by 2.0 times 10 to the negative 5th farads means I need 7.2 volts across the top. That's pretty good. Any other questions from the room? I'll upload my notes on this. I have one other example, um, but it is similar. And I forget where on the syllabus um, I have this, but I think I'm asking you to do like two conceptual questions related to this and two problems. So just enough so I can make sure you understand how to do it well. And because we're not going to be on two different cohorts next week, I will be adjusting the syllabus for each of our cohorts. But that's all I kind of wanted to do on that. 